Hey everyone. Well, 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 well. I've just had the one of the coolest experiences I've ever had with, with horses. Um, and I'm exhausted. I've, I've got home, had a shower. I'm just running into town to get some uh, Tucker to cook for dinner. Um, so the, the neighbours have a, a property up in, in near Benambra and the, there's a big bunch, a couple of mobs of Brumbies run through there and uh, anyway Phil and I got talking about what to do with the numbers and they, 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 the numbers are too great, it's not sustainable and um, I figured rather than shoot them we could probably break a few in and sell them and give them a bit of a future. Um, well. For the last 18 months that we've known the guys, for one reason or another, we could never get up there. But this weekend, uh, the world tried to conspire to make it not happen. Um, I, I had to leave Anne and Matilda behind, which which was not uh, the most enjoyable aspect of the weekend by the long stretch. But um, the, the neighbour's daughter is a an ASAP trimmer, and. They're, they're one of the two properly accredited uh, trimming courses in Australia and she put a group together to go out and have a look at the Brumbies and the environment and um, Dr Chris Pollard uh, was invited and, and he and his wife Sandy took up the invitation so uh, Chris is someone I became aware of through Pete Ramey actually and then, uh, then his name just kept popping up, popping up. Oh, he's on, he's on one of Clinton Anderson's training videos, one of Clinton's free training videos, where he goes out into the, <laughs> he goes out into the Australian outback, mate, uh, up the territory, and they get a brumby stung in and break him in. And, and of course, Chris uh, gives his expert uh, narrative on the brumby in that too. So, and, and ever since then, it's become really apparent that the guys are a font of knowledge on the brumbies and. and um, to, to be around he and his wife and, and the trimmers all of whom are just really lovely, really passionate people was just something else and I wasn't there for, for any reason um, to do with hoof care, it was more you know, being friends with the neighbours and, and doing a little bit of a display on horse handling which was um, really nice because I'm not full of confidence in what I do in that it's not blingy and shiny and uh, a lot of the time I can't do something in three minutes and have a horse being rid type thing but what, what I love about what I do is what it means to the horse and uh, to be able to talk about that with passionate, very intelligent people who, um, I mean you won't find a qualified barefoot trimmer who isn't an advocate for the horse. Um, you know, to be among people like that and, and share my thoughts and ideas was, was really cool. Um, and, and it was great to, you know, what I, I do do a bit of trimming of, of our horses. Um, oh, that's the horn. I've stopped doing it for other people for various reasons, time being the main one. I want to focus on my training, but um, I, I, I'm nowhere near educated or trained to the level of these people that were there. So there's a saying that says if you're the smartest person in the room, you might be in the wrong room. I was in the right room. It was amazing. Um, anyway, so Phil set up a, a yard in the bush, <clears throat> sort of like a roundish type yard. And at one end he put a trip wire with some food, and the trip wire would close the gate once they, uh, once the animals were, were in there. So we we come out and we caught four. It was a small band. It was a a roan stallion, a bay mare, and the mare had a foal of foot, and they, there was four horses. The fourth one was uh, what we assume is the mare's um, last foal, so she looked, she looked like a yearling, maybe not quite. She's a little grey, roany looking thing, cute as pie. But uh, so she was the one we thought we'd work with because I don't have time at the moment, I'm overbooked, but she could learn how to be a horse in domestication in um, at our property or at Phil's and um, you know not base the prospect of being thrown in a stable or all that sort of stuff. We, we try and keep our horses in herds and as naturally as practical 
as we can here. So that was the idea, and uh, we, we drafted out the others, and, and the little filly was in there. And I spent, uh, oh, I don't know, four hours maybe, and it was pelting rain for a couple of hours. It was raining so hard that um, there was a three mil sheet of water running down the, the trunk of one of the gum trees. And um, you know, thankfully I stayed reasonably dry under my snow jacket, but the, the, I worked in there with her for four hours and some people came and watched and left and came and um, it was probably like watching a game of golf probably good if you're into golf or if you're the one doing it but watching maybe not so much and um and, and a lot of it's repetitive so by the time people got the gist you know they moved on and there's plenty of other things to do especially with Chris around it no pressure working with a Brumby with um, Dr Chris Pollitt watching along and you know Chris has been involved in the production of works where Clinton Anderson's broken uh, a Brumby and that so it was a really um really difficult thing to want to achieve a quick blingy result to try and get some kudos but you know i got pitched off a horse a few months ago and um it was just the perfect time i skipped ahead steps trying to please the owner and uh we're trying to get more done than, than i thought you know than i should have um anyway the to, to have that audience watch was quite helpful because they're all very um, strong on their values and it was a reminder to say don't try and please anyone just you try and please that horse and uh, so she became my focus and I got to talk a lot what I was doing and what I thought I was seeing and uh, I got to tell my energy story which I'll tell separately because it being someone who grew up in the middle of Queensland with some real rough old bushies and a you know bunch of outback boys it's a bit funny to talk about energy but uh, this thing was physical and undeniable so I will talk about that another time but um, you know I got to talk about that and, and quite a few things while I was working with this little filly and she pretty quickly she was curious she'd, uh, she'd you know turn and look at you and, and give you her attention but then she'd get worried especially when the um, the other horses that got drafted out went over into another stallion's area or close to his herd and the stallion hunted them and when they come past you were really really distracted and worried it was kind of heartbreaking you know to for her to watch her safety of her herd run past and be stuck in there with me so the obligation was to get her to feel safe and i figured with if they're paying attention to you in a relaxed manner and they can look over there and then you might move and they can just look back at you as calmly as you like they're probably pretty relaxed and feeling safe. Um, if they're not, they probably either wouldn't look at you or, or would, <laughs> you know, look at your bug-eyed. So we got it to that point, and it was it was bloody amazing. You know, all I wanted to to do because it was a long session was to get this horse where she, where I could offer him a hand, and she could walk up and sniff it, and then. Uh, uh, and I don't I don't follow a method, just principles and, and reading the horse. So that. I didn't know what I was looking for at first, but I kind of wanted to, to show her that, hey, you can have a sniff of me, and I, I won't do anything at all, not even take my hand away. And sometimes I did take the hand away, sometimes I didn't. Sometimes I left it there and offered it to her to, to go, well, it didn't move when I touched it. And, um, and other times I just let her walk away and did nothing about it. Um, but once she learned that I would back away from her when she looked at me and in a manner of holding my hand out to kind of draw her to the hand she got really frustrated and angry rolling her head around and stamping her feet and <clears throat> doing the big snort and I, I can't remember who was watching but I said I think I think she knows what I want so I'm not going to do anything um, and you, you, some of you might remember that grey horse where I just stayed there and uh, waited for him to walk across the, the little ditch and, and, and I just gave him his own time and space to find the confidence because he gave me clues that he understood what I wanted and this little filly did the same thing and um, anyway it was amazing she went through her old gamble of emotions over there away from me and then once I, I didn't move I thought oh, well, I'm not buying into it I'm, I'm just going to stand here and I'm not going to add any fuel to any fire or anything and um, 
Anyway, she got over her fears and come over and sniffed me and I, the hairs on my arm stood up. It was amazing. So I ended that session there and um, just let her think about it for a while. And I come back later on and, and she was probably, she probably ran around a lot more in the second session than she did in the first. But she found to be able to just stand and look at me and be cool a lot quicker. Um, and then I presented her the hand, my hand, not to touch, but to connect to, just just as, you know, here, just can you look at my hand, basically. But I'd, this is where I love what we do in relation to dressage. Everything you're looking for is a soft mind, so you get a soft body, free of any defensive postures that will cause um, a lot of body issues, uh, definitely performance issues. And, and soundness issues long term. So we're, we're starting to break her in long before a rope ever went near her. And the, and the coolest thing was, it was her straightness start, training started, because look, that's what we're doing. We're just looking for straightness and we do it mentally and physically, blah, blah, blah. But it started when I presented my hand and just it was just something for her to just look at, basically. And once she understood that that's what I wanted, she'd look at my hand and just stretch her top line and, and, and lower her head as she looked around and the eyes would go all um, soft, not not tired and sleepy and glassy. Not She only shut down on me once and I worked with her for probably six hours that day. Only once did she go to shut down. So, uh, And she always was happy to, to look really curious. Um, Chris asked me if I thought she was smart. She's definitely not the smartest horse I've worked with, but she was. She's definitely not dumb either. They, you know, if we try and emulate the way horses communicate with each other, well, they, they should. If we do it right, they should know what, what we're getting at. And the fact that she looked like she knew what I was asking, well, I'd say yeah, she's pretty smart. But um, a beautiful de and, and very humbling and very upsetting to work with a a wild horse. Um, and, and you know when she first came up and touched me she touched me a few times when she first walked up dropped all her defenses and touched me and then didn't bugger off and just stayed there wow that that was humbling that was uh, you know a good reminder don't try and please other people but if you can please the horse that much and get it to like you with that that's worth chasing um, and of course the fast way is the slow way and the slow way is the fast way so um, I'm tired I'm exhausted we, we had a few dramas um, happening over the weekend while I was away, so I'm a bit guilty about that, but I'm very humbled and thankful to be um, invited in by this wonderful group of people and to, to be given such an amazing opportunity to work with the uh, Australian Brumby. And um, you know, I've said all along I'd quit my job tomorrow if I, if I could pay the mortgage in Brumbies and breaking them in and giving them a future that's uh, different to being shot out of a helicopter or whatever these other idiot politicians want to do. Um, so yeah, how cool, not a lot happened. I was really tempted to get a rope on her and uh, start getting her to face up and slide that halter on, but I thought well, that, that can happen at any time. And the plan was, we'd work with her as long as we could, and I, I had the truck, so if we got her broke enough, she could come home and, and, and live here. But that was a, it wasn't a plan that was a goal and the plan was to work towards the goal at the horse's pace and, and what what ended up happening it rained a lot we had that you know massive rain event in victoria that you all might have heard about and um i was meant to leave tomorrow but one of the people there julie ha has this big kick-ass f250 and it was the only vehicle there that had any chance of uh, recovering me if i got bogged and the track in and out of the property got really slippery so um you know i kind of had to even though it was an amazing experience, the right thing to do was to, to leave it at that today. And um, it was really nice because I said to Chris, I feel a bit bad about turning this horse out. You know, I feel like I let her down a bit. Well, I don't know if I said that, but that was my motivation. I said, do you think they, um, Herb will take her back? And how cool to have the opportunity of a Brumby expert to be right there with you. And he said, well, she's a filly. They'll take her straight back. And uh, that was very relieving. So hopefully I haven't caused her to hate humans, um, but she definitely caused me to love the Brumbies a bit more. I've worked with a few now who, who have already been caught, but to work with a wild one, very humbling. So there you go, I've rattled on for nearly 15 minutes. If you listen to that, cool, um, good on you. Hopefully that's of some interest and uh, 
motivating to keep on track the little stuff's the big stuff and great thanks to um, the ASAP group the, the Kenyan family how lucky we are to have met you guys and uh, to Chris and Sandy for sharing your uh, knowledge and kindness with us peace out